Brando, I finna slam dunk. Get big on you fake pumps. That bump in the fake pump. Bitch, fell for the pump fake. Got him talking like first take. Get it right on the first take. Hit the hole in the first. I just left the radio station too. I said, I don't see why people do the radio, man. They be trying to be too organized in the radio. See, podcast better because you can sit down and you can just relax and have a conversation. Yeah. And the radio is like serious. Like, yes. so uh, how does your mama feel about your current <laughs> employment? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just too much. Mike check, Mike check. Another episode of Sit Down with Slim, man. We got two very special guests in here. One fresh off a of podcast, though. <laughs> and Maine was actually supposed to be on here, too, but we couldn't get the schedules aligned. But it's all right. We still good. We got uh, George in the house and Yo. Kip. How y'all doing? Good. Everybody good, man. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm going to start it out with a question because I really want to ask Kip some. Are you camera shy? No, man. You sure you're not? No, I'm positive. Because I feel like you was camera shy. I was like, man, I think he trying to uh, switch the uh, dates and times around because he's camera shy. Because you know quiet camera shy, right? No, no, definitely not that, man. <laughs> I'm a motivated speaker, man, so I'm used to being in front of the public. You just careful with who who you uh get on the camera with you, right? Yeah, most definitely. Okay, that makes Everybody sense. Everybody ain't got your best interest at heart. I already know it. See, on here, this is a safe space. We ain't we ain't gonna talk about uh who you dated 30 years ago. Right. <laughs> None right. of that crazy right. stuff. But quiet camera shot, man. People don't know that about him. <laughs> they don't, let me find out he camera shot. He is. Yeah, I'm, sure I'm telling you, see, I'm telling you, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how I know. Every time he sit in front of the camera, he always say, which camera I'm supposed to look at? That's a, bro, that's a defense mechanism. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he trying to deflect. <laughs> well, yeah, man, George, you had a real good interview with Maine, though. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I listened to it like two times. I showed you, I showed you at the photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. listened to it that day, then I listened to it again when I had uh, got on the plane. Real good interview. But... We're gonna have a good one today too, man. Right. <laughs> but yeah, let's uh start out with Kip though. Um where you from and what school you went to? Let's start there. Okay, I'm from Augusta, Georgia. I went to Lucius Crab Lane High School. I graduated in nineteen eighty three. Nineteen eighty three? Yeah. How was Augusta back then in nineteen eighty three? Hey man, Augusta was popping. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, the difference in those times then and now, you know, the way the city is now, it's kind of like out of control. Back then, you had a whole lot of morals and values and discipline in people than you have today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how I see, you know, those times versus now. Why you say that, though? Well, I mean, you know, people, they stood on different principles back then. Like now, you know, you see a lot of things that goes on in the city, man, that, that wouldn't be tolerated, so to speak, back in those days. And the reason being, man, because I guess you would say the OGs that was here at one point, you know, passed it on and passed it on and passed it on, but now it's like there's no guidance. There. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like just do what you want to do, man. You know, no repercussion behind it. When yeah. you think that changed? Uh, I left so many years ago, man. So somewhere along the line, it wasn't like that when I left, but somewhere along the line, it was a gap in between there. And I started seeing it as they were coming in, how times had changed because of the character of the people that was coming from behind the walls, you know. Mm -hmm. So I knew the difference before I even came back out here. What kind of guy was you in high school? Was you like uh, George and uh, hooped and was a cool hooper guy? <laughs> well, I mean, I, growing up, man, I played all three sports, man, and I broke my knee. And that's how my life took a different turn. And so I went in the military. You know, I went in the Navy. And, of course, after I healed, I played all Navy ball. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, definitely he got his hooping abilities, not just from me, but from his granddaddy. <laughs> my daddy was an athlete, so, you know, he come from an athletic family, man. Oh, okay. I look at him sometime now and see a lot of me in my younger days in him. Yeah, definitely. You had the same build as in when yeah, you was younger? Yeah, yeah, of course. No question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that size until later. Man, and they be trying to pick on him saying he's too skinny, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I had His arch uh, nemesis, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> Walt, no, it wasn't him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Walt was talking trash, too. He had me FaceTime quiet at the bar. Talking about some man, tell Slim, um, 
uh, that little game winner was weak, and I was locking him down the whole game. <laughs> I called game on him when I shot. So he left my hand. <laughs> game. He said he said that was the only bucket you had. <laughs> Walt, I'm gonna see. <laughs> That's gonna be the clip right there. <laughs> but yeah, what made you join the Navy though? Well, like I said, after I tore my knee up, I knew that would hurt my chances to go to college and play. You know, because I had once I had surgery on my knee. I had to go back in the hospital and have another surgery the following year to remove the pins that I had. I mean, so it just took a different, took a detour in the direction of me being an athlete um, in high school at that particular time. So I had to go through a series of rehabs and things of that nature, whatever. So, But I never gave up. So when I went in the Navy and I tried out, you know, and that was a whole other story, man. I, I ended up playing all Navy ball. Mm. Yeah. How was the Navy, the actual job you went in for? Uh, I went to school for a dispersing clerk, which is equivalent to being like a, a bank manager, a loan manager, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they sent me to accounting school in Meridian, Mississippi. So I did that, and um, real racist. I have successful, though. yeah, definitely, no question, <laughs> no question, man. Mississippi is Mississippi. That's where my baby brother family uh, from. Yeah, and yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I actually traveled through there the first time after I left California to go to Memphis. I came home and I drove to Memphis to learn the, the route. And man, when I went through Mississippi, I said, "Boy, it's everything they said in the history book." <laughs> yeah, that's one of them places where, like, if you're traveling and you got to go through that state, you don't want to stop and get no gas. Oh, you want to just go straight through. Bad experience. Bad yeah. experience. I remember uh, Meridian too. It's a it's a Home Depot across the street from a Walmart, right? There wasn't no home, nothing back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was in the eighties. Store, yeah, man. And when you go to the store, you pack your own grocery in a brown paper sack. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really okay. Crazy, man. Some stores still had dirt floors. That sounds like the movie Life. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, dirt floors. Dirt floors, man. Like in the, the stove? Like the curb, like the curb market in uh in the bottom back in the day. In the stove? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some places was like that, man. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. How'd you like being in the Navy though? I loved it, man. You know, um my whole focus was I wanted to travel and see the world. So mm-hmm. I got a chance to do that, man. I've been around the world four and a half times. I was blessed to be able to see countries, man, that you can only imagine going to at free of charge, you know, at the expense of the Navy. But however, you know, at the end of the day, man, um, being in the military, getting the experience, becoming a man, traveling, seeing the world, you know, it's something that I would never trade, you know. And the biggest regret that I have, man, my biggest regret, and I tell people this all the time, they look at me like I'm crazy. My biggest regret wasn't the fact of being incarcerated or going to prison or whatever. My biggest regret was getting out of the Navy because I didn't have to. Mm. You know, I could have did them 20 years like that. And then, you know, set your life up for the rest of your life. <laughs> I did 21 in there, you know. So yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so definitely, man. Um, but, you know, you live and you learn, man. And, you know, life is about choices and decisions that you make. So however the, the hand is dealt, you can hold them or fold them, you know. So I made some unwise decisions after being encouraged to make other decisions. But, you know, you're young, you know it all, you know. So a lot of times, you you know, you have to learn, you know, and that's what I did, man. You know, but I didn't allow that to stagnate my growth and development. You know, I kept moving past that. Oh, so what made you get out of the Navy, though? Like, what was the decision? Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny <laughs> question, man, because, you know, man, <laughs> I come up. I come up in the streets, man. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, a lot of times in the military, believe it or not, you got the same type of cats that's just like you in the military, just like in the penitentiary or anywhere else. So, you know, I had quite a few partners, man. You know, we we kind of like was in the same field, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was wiser and smarter at that particular time to make that move than to be caught up, which I eventually did later, you know. Mm-hmm. But... um yeah, man, I, I didn't have to get out. I made rank quick, man, you know, moving up the charts. But, you know, however, man, at the end of the day, you know, the way that life panned it out, you know, it happened the way it was supposed to happen to make me the man I am today. Yeah. So what did you do after you got out the uh, Navy? Oh, man, 100 miles of running. <laughs> <laughs> 100 miles of running, man, you know. Hey, the way of the world, man, you know, I... You know, I took the advantage of every situation, man, and I capitalized on it, man, and moved forward. Yeah. yeah, definitely, man, you know. And, you know. Was Augusta different at that time 
from before you went to the Navy to after you got out? Uh, well, it made it made it made some changes, but not the drastic changes that it is today. Okay, you know, back then, you know, you know, a lot of a lot of younger guys was actually trying to do things with their life, whether by way of college, by way of trade school, by way of military, by way of, you know, whatever. You know, of course, you always had cats that was, you know doing their thing in the street or whatever. But for the most part, man, you have a situation where you always had people trying to uplift you and put you in a situation or a position to be better, you know, mm-hmm. to know better, do better, and be better. But, you know, you don't really have that here today. Not to say that it don't exist, but every chance I get to motivate somebody, give them some insight, you know, some guidance or whatever I share, you know, it's up to them to accept it. All I can do is plant the seed. What kind of got you uh, leaning towards the streets after the Navy, though? Uh, man, I come up on 9th Street, man. And let me tell you something about 9th Street. You ever heard of 9th Street? Yeah. Man, 9th Street is where the pimps, the pushers, the hustlers, the robbers, the killers, the rapers, the prostitutes, the punks, whatever whatever can go on in a city. 9th Street the most popular street in this city, man. Mm-hmm. They changed the name to Jane Brown Boulevard, but that's the most popular street. In this city, you know, seeing a man get his brain blowed out of him, seven, eight years old, standing by a telegram pole, you know, seeing the riot when the riot took place um, with the Black Panthers. I'm talking about visualizing, seeing this with my own eyes, you know, seeing cats get knocked out, seeing cats get stabbed, you know, this type of stuff I seen as a kid coming up. So I wouldn't really say it always have to shape your mental, but, you know, seeing that. And being in that environment, it kind of hardens you to a degree. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So uh, what kind of people was you motivated by from Ninth Street that you seen? Uh, at that particular time? Yeah. The players. <laughs> yeah, the players. Man. Some of them cats still living today, man. I salute them. You know, they, they 10, 15 years older than me. I always with the older cats, man. So I, I moved fast, you know. I was oh. off the porch quick. Oh, yeah, Kawhi yeah. was joking on your suits from back then. Oh, man, yeah, <laughs> man. yeah. I always been a flat cat, man. But I was a flat cat they whatever fly. era. You know, whatever era it was, that's what it was, you know? Yeah. He yeah. said, uh, when you came home, you still had all them throwback jerseys, and he was like, Pops, they don't wear that no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You know, all that stuff was put up, man. You know, so my Pops, you know, he had them put everything up in my ball. You know, that stuff wasn't hurt, period. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, man, how that stuff can survive all those years, man, and still be intact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So what happened to get you off the streets to uh, get you to doing time? Well, I actually caught a case, man, um, almost 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. And um situation, it, um, it kind of put me in a, a situation where um, – it led me the direction of having to go do time. Mm-hmm. So when that transpired, you know, I knew then it was like God would give my undivided attention. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. with that being the case, as soon as I um, started my started doing my time, I immediately enrolled in college. So I got a degree from Mercy University, Human Resource Administration, Minor Communication. So. I took a I took a welding trade first, then I took a brick mason trade, then I put, took a barber cosmetology trade, and I became a motivational speaker. But during that time, my first three years in, I played on the state basketball team, and they took that away out of the system. So I played ball during the day, and I went to college at night. So it was like I was in college. Just <laughs> yeah. Home. Yeah. Yeah. My dad did the same thing. He actually yeah. caught a Fed uh, case, right. and he and he got his degree as soon as he got in, right, and got his real estate license and everything. So Did my thing was I took the advantage of every situation. That was my that was my ultimate goal, man, because I knew I wanted to get back home to my kids, my family, or whatever. And my thing was even when 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 Dad Trey Quad and Dad them were growing up, my thing was I'm not going to accept nothing less from them as far as their education because I'm I'm expect the best for myself. So I would even send them my grades. I would send them my report cards. Mm. You know. When I made dean's list in college, I sent them my dean's list certificate. So, you know, I was letting them know at the same time, education is the key, and a lack thereof, you're going to suffer. 
Yeah. George, how did his incarceration affect you growing up? It's a it's a bunch of I, I went through a bunch of different like emotions about it. Like when I was young, I ain't I ain't really understand it till I start getting older. We used to always go visit them and stuff though. It was just like my father was in prison, you know. Mm-hmm. But when I started getting older and a little wiser, I did go through a little period of resentment. Like I, I was like I used to start seeing like other kids. They got their father. They ain't really struggling and stuff like that. I had to watch my mom work. Like she worked three jobs at times. You know what I'm saying to make ends meet. And I like I used to be thinking to myself like, man, why my pops had to go do that? But it wasn't a long period. He he probably don't even know nothing about it. I never really. I never really talked about it. I think I told him about it one time, but it wasn't nothing. It probably like an eight month period or something like that. It wasn't nothing crazy like that. I got over it quick, but it was it was tough. I ain't it was tough, mm. real tough. Like it would be a lot of times like I wanted to do stuff, but I knew that my mom was paying all the bills. You know what I'm saying by herself and stuff. And I just I used to feel like as a child, like it's selfish of me to be asking so much of my mom. Like I want to go out of town, like AAU trips. We have to pay all that money and stuff. Mm-hmm. Some trips I won't even go. I just play locally, and I won't go when they go like to New York or something. Cause we had to pay like two, three hundred dollars or something. I just be like, I ain't even finna mission it to my mom. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of stuff I missed out on. But it, I mean, it is what it is. Do you feel like when your parents doing time, you kind of doing the time too? Because I hear a lot of people say that. It's, to be honest, it's like, I grew up, like, while he was in prison. Like, he was in, I was out. You know what I'm saying? So, it was kind of like a norm. I didn't mm-hmm. really understand until I got older. Then it, it started dragging because he like he was going up for parole hearings and they kept postponing it, pushing it back, saying that okay, you got to complete this, you got to complete it because he was supposed to got out. And I was like, what? I was like fifteen. Yeah, yeah. But he ended up, I think, getting out when I turned maybe twenty two or twenty one. One of them. Mm. My, I think it was twenty two. So what was going on with the, with the uh, parole process? Well, actually, man, when I came up at seven. They set me off eight. So that's a whole year longer than I had did initially. So when I got to 15, which eight more years made 15, they set me off five. Mm. So um, when I was completing the program, as he making reference to, was um, I was supposed to go home or to the halfway house once I completed it. But that was, it was a reentry program or something. But that wasn't, that wasn't a true statement of what was actually done. You know, so... I ended up doing, uh, after the 15, I think I did two more years and they sent me to the transition center. So I was there like two and a half years mm. on long term. And I made the program and I ended up getting out. You know, so um, that's how that went, man. You know, my thing was while I was gone and, you know, being in constant communication with them and visiting and stuff like that, I never, I never wanted them to experience or feel the rigors of everything that goes on in the penitentiary. So I never let them know that, you know, it's it's a it's a possibility that I could never make it out of here alive <laughs> just because of the way the pen is. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know, you go in a man, you come out a man, but a lot of people go in and don't make it home, you know. Yeah, because you know that's what we thinking when we see stuff like Oz and stuff on TV. Yeah, yeah. Thinking that's how prison is. Yeah, the penitentiary is real, man. You can lose your life in the penitentiary. Is it like all them shows, though? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, it, you know, in reality, <laughs> man, you can lose your life in the pen at any given day, you know. Mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, um, now the system is like, it's crazy, man. But, you know, uh, during my time of incarceration, man, you know, and I've been to several different camps, man, you know. You can't become a part of everything that goes on in the penitentiary. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, man, you place yourself in a volatile situation. You know, it's almost like being out here and being with a group of people and you don't know what's going on. You walk into the middle of investigation and you're in the fed forever. You know what I'm saying? Versus being in there and you just trying to be down with a group of people. You don't know what they got going on. And, 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 And one day it just kick off. 
and you wondering where it come from, and you know, lost your life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like everything crossed on you, and them people still good. You know, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep your head up, man. Keep your head on swivel, and take care of your business, man. You know, you gotta take care of your business in that. Yeah, what that um maximum security one you was at? Uh, Phillips. Phil, yeah, yeah, man. Oh, we, I know man, what that is. Man, yeah. we went. I still remember that. We, I probably was about maybe twelve, eleven. We walking on the outside because you got to go through all these checkpoints and everything because mm-hmm. it's it's the maximum. Man, you can hear the people in there like they. Inside of they dorms or whatever, they're out there screaming. Like, you can hear them screaming down at us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah trying to get your yeah, attention. Yeah, you know, it, it's wild. Like, it's like it chaos when you walking up to the gate. But when you go in, you finally get in, and I see my pop, like, he high energy. Like, every time we came to see him, he high energy. He grabbing us, he hugging us, throwing us in the air and everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, he trying to brighten us up. Yeah. I ain't understand it, though, when I was young. But now, you know what I'm saying, looking back at it, I understand why he was doing it. Yeah, man, because, you know, the stuff that he may have been hearing, it could have been anything, man. It could have yeah. been somebody get stabbed, somebody get raped, a fight. It could have been a lot of things. And all those things go on daily, you know, mm-hmm. daily, you know. But the thing is, man, when you, when you walk behind them walls, man, you can't walk behind them walls uh, with the mentality, man, I'm trying to go home. I'm trying to go home. I'm trying to go home. You got to do time. Yeah. You know, you know you're not in society. That don't mean you have to block society out your mind, but you got to do what you're doing inside the pen, man. You got to do time. You don't do the time, time will do you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, did you try on any uh, religions while you was in there? Yeah, 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 definitely, man. But I'm a, I'm a Muslim, so, you know, I was the imam, so I was the leader of what, you know, I guess you would say equivalent to what they have out here as a minister or whatever, so mm-hmm. I was the leader of the Muslim for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, every camp I was at, you know, I was the imam, so. We had a we had a tight community, man, and and we had a we had a system that 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 really worked, you know. And my thing was, when I give the information, and give the give the uh, the cook bars delivered every week, or whenever I would speak, you know, I was building them to prepare themselves to come back out here and be successful. See, mm-hmm. my thing always been. When I come back to society, I want it to be an asset rather than a liability. Yeah. So that was my that was my whole focus, man. And the thing about doing time, man, I wrote down on paper short-term goal, mid-range goal, long-term goals. So the things that I wrote down that I wanted to do, if I afforded a chance to get out, I check some off as I go. You know. So what, uh June be nine years I've I've been out, man, you know, and you know, it's a blessing, man. All praise be to due to Allah, man. And that's that's the way I look at it, you know. You know, he he, he gave me life to give me life. If that makes sense to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know, he gave me a life sentence. I had life plus five. And I did twenty one years, but he gave me life to give me life, you know, that I have now. So had not that happened, you know, me becoming incarcerated and able to make the changes I made in my life, I wouldn't be the man I am today. Um, I got a question for George, but one for you first. Okay. Do you feel like prison rehabilitation? Me? As you a, as are indi- people, period. As an individual, yeah. Okay. But as for people as a whole, it doesn't do that. They offer the programs. They offer the systems and things of that nature. But it's all relied on the individual, man. The individual have to make the effort to say, I'm going to make a difference. You don't make the difference, man. You could do 20 dead years and come back out here and be worse. Mm. Yeah, I refuse to be one of those cats, man. Was you? Uh, did you always have that mindset, or did it take a little while while you was in there to have that mindset? No, 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 no. I always been, I always been a bright dude, man, so I always try to use my intellect. You know, sometimes situation calls you to allow your emotion to override your intellect, but I've always been big on education, always. You know, I was always a good student. You know, of course, even when I went in the Navy, man, you know, I applied for the, the job I had, man, you know. But, you know, the thing the thing of the matter is when you use that, it's, it's kind of like when you hear parents or old grandparents say back in the day, you may stray away, but there'll come a time where you'll get back to what you was taught. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like that situation, you know. So, you know, I'm not bitter at all, man. You know, I, yeah, I miss my family. I miss my kids, you know, my parents and things of that nature, whatever. But this situation, you know, I had to go through what I went to to become who I am today. 
You know, I mean, I could have been in the feds, man, and never see the street again or dead, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's just a man that's being real and honest with himself. You know, a lot of people won't say that or, 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 or speak on that, but Allah gave me life to give me life. Yeah, and that's where I see it, man, you know. You know, you ever heard the term, like, you can't cry with spill milk, man? I don't mm-hmm. just wallow in pity, man, you know. I know that, you know, whatever transpired, I did my time, man, and I come back, and I want to be an asset to anything that I touch rather than a liability, and that's what I do. Even with the mentor program that I have in the school, you know, it's been kind of held up right now with COVID situation, Mm -hmm. but, you know, I had mentor programs at Laney, Murphy, um, Richmond Hill. You know, I have spoken in several schools, Butler. Uh, I have been somewhere everywhere, Josie. Uh, And I go back inside the prison to speak as well. You know, I've been keynote speaker on graduations, uh, lifers programs. And I let these guys know, man, you know, that, you know, you can come out here and make a difference. You know, a lot of guys get out of the penitentiary. And I'm not knocking nobody that get out. But a lot of guys get out of the penitentiary and they come out here and they feel like the world owed them something. Or they come out with their hands out. You got to come out, man, and knowing that you got a direction. But you can't wait until you get out to start planning and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. You have to walk your life in there to prepare yourself to come out here and be successful. Yeah, that's what you have to do. And that, that happens to a lot of people, man. They don't make their mind up until they come home that they want to do this, that, and third. Now you got to prepare in there. Mm. Yeah, each and every day. Yeah. George, so uh, your dad being locked up, how did that affect you and your siblings as far as making the decision to be in the streets or not be in the streets? That's a tough one, man. Cause I mean, he 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 always told us like, look, you don't want to be in here. But it's like you're not here. Dude. You know what I'm saying? To be telling what we can and can't do. You know what I'm saying? Even mm-hmm. though I never disrespected him like that, I never said that. But you know, that's a thought that's gonna play in your head as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Mind still, you know, you developing, but. We was blessed to have our, me and Quart to have an older brother. He ain't allowed that. My mama ain't play that. My dad ain't play that. My aunties ain't play that. So and my older cousins, all them like street dudes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They ain't allowed that for me and Quart. Like they weren't, they weren't going for that. And it's like a lot of it. it, it that's half of it, and the other half is. Us as individuals making that decision, like, that ain't the life, you know what I'm saying, we want for ourselves. So we always stayed in the books and all that, even though we was, we was around it 24-7, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we tell you all kind of different street stuff, you know what I'm saying, how to... <laughs> I don't even want to go into it, but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I was around it, like, you know what I'm saying, 24-7, like, I was around it all the time, like... I done had it on me, all kind of stuff. But I never, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna get on here and lie. But <laughs> my brother found that and he didn't even, it wasn't, he, he wasn't mad at me. It was more of a disappointment. Like he was disappointed. It was just like, this ain't, you know, like, no, nah, man. And, that was enough for me to not even, you know what I'm saying, dabble in it no more. Like, I just left it alone and just stuck to, you know what I'm saying, the books, stayed in the books and going to school and stuff. So he was a little older when your dad... Uh, yeah. I yeah. Got his brother, time. Was How old was about, he? I think he was about eight or About nine. eight, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the thing was with that, man, you know, even at his funeral, man, I spoke at his funeral and I said, man, you know, you know, a lot of people want to say this and say that. You know, if you want to point the finger, point the finger at me. You know, point the finger at me because he was around me for that amount of time until I left, not thinking I'm going to leave. Do you still him. feel responsible for that? No, I'm talking about as far as um, him growing up seeing. Oh, okay. I got you. His life. You, mm-hmm. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I follow you. So, so, so my thing was to... Um, let people know that 
you know, when you're not exposed to a, a particular thing, um, a lot of times you make different decisions or whatever. So that was my thing was to let people, a lot of times people be exposed to stuff by, by having snaps, you know. But my thing was with, with, with Trey and Quad, I wanted them to always know, man, I've done enough time for everybody in the family. <laughs> You feel what I'm saying? I was going yeah, two decades, years, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I come out standing straight up like a man. You know what I'm saying? I went in a man, I came out a man. But my thing, my thing totally um, about that particular situation was, you know, I always prayed for them. Always, man. You know, that Allah protect them, cover them, keep them, keep them safe from any hurt, harm, or danger. However, um, I worried a lot about influences. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. people would see them when, they, especially when they were younger, and they'll tell me, you know, that's little Kip, that's yeah. little Kip, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, a lot of time people mean well, but sometimes people feel like it's in you. So, you know, come on with it. You know what I mean? So, my thing was always to 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 give them insight about certain things, and I and I I can't say enough how much I respect. Daryl being the man that he was. And the thing is that a lot of that come from not just his mama praying, his grandmama praying, me praying, my parents praying. A lot of that reached him. And what I'm saying, it reached him in a way that he was able to be wise enough to protect them. Because the average cat that go do time and dad was in the streets, normally the child followed that, that pattern. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he was wise enough and sharp enough to know that, hey, this ain't for y'all. You know, we're dealing with enough. Our pops gone. Yeah. This ain't for y'all. You know, and, and 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 I'm amazed, but I know the power of Almighty Allah. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, he was sharp enough and wise enough to know. I'm not going to even expose them to that. But the average big brother, come on, we this a team. <laughs> Yeah. So I can't I can't say enough to respect just that alone. And I told him this, just for keeping his brother safe from that hurt, harm, or danger. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, Daryl, you know, growing up, man, he saw everything. You feel where I'm coming from? Yeah. So If he was eight, I'm sure he did. Come on, man. Yeah. Before eight, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, he was with me daily. Mm-hmm. You know, that's my man. And I get ready to go out the door and I grab my strap, grab my page or whatever. You know, he had a toy page that used to have a bubble gum in it and the toy <laughs> ooze or whatever. You know, he grabbed it, put it on, turned his hat to the back, and that's what it was, man. We dressed it like every day. You know, that's my man, you know. Um, but I'm grateful, man, that that um I trusted in Almighty Allah and He blessed them in a way that you can't even imagine. Because I never doubted a law, but I wasn't physically there. And I would try to read them when I see them, but I could only read so much in a visitation room because they can put on a front. But who I was seeing was really who they was. You know, when I talked to them on the phone, you know, I would try to decipher certain stuff without them knowing when I write them letters, you know, but I never, I never picked up on them straying to the point where, I can pick up on it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, of course, you know, as kids and you expose to certain things, you're going to try certain things, you know? I mean, hey, man, I was I was driving 12 years old, man. I'm with big grown men, man, you know? <laughs> but back then, you know, your, your grandparents or whatever, you know, whoever your gardeners is, you know, they trust these people around you because this your uncle people or whatever, you know? But, hey, man, you know. I made a lot of choices and decisions in life, man. You know, see, I was young and went to California, man, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. So, you know, California ain't nowhere to play with. So, you know, I grew up seeing California young. You feel what I'm saying? So some of the experiences I had out there early on, you know, coming back, you know, this way, it's kind of like night and day. You know what I'm saying? California a fast city. So it'll swallow you up, man, if you ain't ready. You feel where I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. So, you know, 
But, um, you know, neither here or there, man. I'm proud of my boys, man. You know, I'm proud of my daughters as well, man. You ain't met them. But, you know, all my kids, man, you know, I look at their lives now, and I just have to be grateful and thankful, and I'm humble, you know, that, that Almighty Allah protected them during my absence because all of them could have went different directions but you see them all together right now, man, you know, and you just look at them and I just sit back and I just marvel at them. I was like, wow, you know what I mean? And so, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I love my kids, man, you know, and I don't treat them no different, you know what I'm saying? I, I love them to the point where they can feel my love. They know how I feel about them. You know, sometimes I come to them for advice, and I know that might sound crazy to you, but I call them and ask them certain things. Oh, no, my I may ask them, I may time. ask them in a group text. <laughs> I may my ask them individually because I love them and I trust them. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. I'm a different dude, man. You know what I mean? And I don't mean different for us coming home from. I'm a different breed of a dude, man. I think different. You know what I'm saying? I think different. I mean, I've always been like that. You know, I was. All, I always been a leader. You know, mm-hmm. I never been a follower, man. You know what I mean? I always been a leader. So you know, um, my thing is, man. Um, I try to do. Things that's that's wholesome and good, you know, all the time. I mean, I'm not a saint. I'm not an angel. I, you know, I fall short or whatever. But for the most part, man, especially this day and time, man, I try to put out number some good, man, into people. I try to pour good. I try to advise people. You know how you've heard the things that uh, people may say, uh, boy, he got the gift of gab. Mm-hmm. I mean, the gift of gab ain't doing nothing, but you do, you gaining some insight or you gaining you know, something to your advantage or whatever, you know. But I got the gift of motivation. You know, if I motivate you, I'm motivating you for nothing in return. Mm -hmm. You know, whether I'm helping you uh, gain something, I'm I'm giving you some information as far as knowledge, some wisdom, some understanding. Now, we know we use knowledge, wisdom, and understanding loosely, but Wisdom, we have to know that that's the effective use of knowledge. That knowledge is no good to you if you're not wise enough or use the wisdom to be able to use it correctly. You understand what I'm saying? So my thing is when I reach out to people, and I think that's one of the reasons that that that, that Almighty Allah allowed me to take the trades that I took in the order that I took them in. I was going to ask you that. What made you lean towards uh, your uh, barber license? It's crazy, man, education? because... The first trade I took, man, I was about everything when I got down the road, man. You know, I was like, okay, I play ball, so they had schedules that said competitive sports. So all we did when you play on the state basketball team, all we did was train, um, film sessions, workout, scrimmage, you know. And when we play a game, whether they come out, can't we go to the game? They come, it'd be two games. It'd be one in the morning and then one in the afternoon. We eat together or whatever. So... Um, with 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 that going, I go to school at night. So once I finished school, I was able to get in trade school. So I was a teacher's aide. So I worked in, I was always in the education department. You know, this is way before barbering. So I went to the principal straight up and told him, it's, he said, man, it's a waiting list. I said, look, I looked him in his eyes. I said, man, I'm not here to do dead time. I said, I don't care what trades you got available. Let me know what you got going on. He said, man, I can squeeze you in welding. So I had to take core curriculum and all that stuff. Put me in welding. I got, uh, I think, 18 months in welding, something like that. But I got 1,850 um, hours of um, combination welding. So arc, mig, oxycetylene, tig. So at that time, I'm thinking I'm do my time, get out, and well. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm getting, it's all about getting something to fall back on out here in society. When I went in the Navy, get a career field that you can come out here and fall back on in society, all right? So when I took the welding trade, I ended up taking a brick mixer trade. So Barbie Carmitage came much later. So I was a teacher aide over the years. Camp. So Barbie Carmitage came open. They transferred me to a camp that had that. I was like, all right, cool, I take it. So I took the trade, and I fell in love with Barbie Carmitage. Now, of course, in my days in the street, I'm in the barbershop every day, all the time. You know what I'm saying? I had mm-hmm. cousin, cousin hair, 
partners couldn't have, but you know, for obvious reasons, other things going, you know, you understand what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. now here I am, all these many years later, now I'm behind the chair. So I said all that to say, I think that Almighty Allah put me in this situation to put me behind the chair so that I can reach people. Not so much about cutting hair. I love that and I enjoy it. You know, it's a great experience and you interact and you meet people, but people have issues, people have problems, people want to talk to you about different things. So a barber is more than just a barber. So he's a counselor, he's a, you know, advisor, confident, you know, things of that nature. So with me being in that capacity, it's like that's the perfect place along with the motivated speaking I do. So, man, you know, it's all in God's plan. That's how I look at it, man, you know. Yeah, the you know, a lot of people like, man, you don't act like you did X, Y, and Z amount of time. I was like, how you supposed to act? <laughs> that's a chapter of your life, man, that you had to go through. Somebody that's in, uh, institutionalized? Yeah, I mean, you know, they always say like, man, you come home, you done did that much time, you're supposed to be crazy. I said, man, listen. Iron One thing boxes. about time, man, time is already made. You have to keep living, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And one thing I always remember is that people way before me in the Bible and the Quran was in captivity. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, even in the Bible when they talk about Daniel and the lion's den. You know, so things like that, man, it makes you, even in, even in there, people would say, man, this dude got the life sense. How he walk around with a smile on his face <laughs> every day? I say because when you got another chance to get it right, you have to be grateful, man. You have to be grateful, you know. And I praise a lot, man, you know. And I thank a lot much, man. You know, it's just, it, the thing is, man, he blessed whom he wills. And he chose whom he played. You ever remember when Braun came in the league, everybody would call him the chosen one? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think he realized the magnitude of saying that because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the chosen one by Allah, right? You know, mm-hmm. uh, he's the last of the seal of the prophet. And I'm not trying to get into religion or whatever, but I'm just saying when he used that moniker, the chosen one, which is nothing wrong with that, but it's far greater than what he think or what he displayed being the chosen one. It's you overwhelming. Right, man. So, you know, I just, man, you know, at the end of the day, I just try to, I try to look at the situation for what it really is, man. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't glorify the penitentiary at all. You know what I'm saying? It, it It's nothing, it's nothing to be glorified about at all. But what I will tell you, <coughs> if a man have to go in there and do his time, Malcolm X once said that if a man want to get himself together, he rate prison second best to college. If a man want to change his life, yeah. So that's something that a man can walk on, man. Yeah, definitely. Mm. That was a mouthful. Yeah, man. So, um, uh, when you first got out of prison, how did you adjust <laughs> to being back in society? Because you were talking about people, people saying uh, institutionalized. Was you good? Hey, man, you know, like, it's funny that, that you ask that because, you know, of course, before I actually got out physically uh, completely out, you know, I was in the halfway house. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was leaving the center every day, you know, going to work and stuff like that. But, I mean, when I got, I got my driver's license in the halfway house, man, I was driving or whatever. So when I, when, I, when I got out, I went straight to work, you know. I mean, just like, just say, for instance, I'm in the center and I went to the barbershop yesterday. I came back. Next morning, I get up, I'm getting out. You know, that day I got out, I, I, I was living in Atlanta. So I came out here to see my, see my family. I left and went back to Atlanta. Next day, I went back to work. You know, just like, no time to waste. You know, I ain't finna sit around. Like, a lot of people get out, boy, I'm finna take a trip. I'm finna go to Hawaii. I'm finna go to the islands. I'm finna go do this. I'm, nah, I'm finna, I'm finna get back in the mainstream of society and move forward. And that's what I did, man. You know, hey, man. Nine years have flew by, man. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and the crazy part about it, it's like when, when when my son got killed in 2016, man. You know that that that, that just took a, like a chunk out of me, you know. But then, like my dad sat down and talked to me, had a long talk with me, 
and my dad know me. <laughs> when I say my dad know me, just like my sons know they daddy, my dad told me, he said, man, listen, you just come. I had been home three years. He said, you just come home. Basically what he was saying, man, let them folk, you know, do what they need to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I appreciate the respect he had for me to come to me and tell me that. Because, I mean, he, he he know me, man. You know what I'm saying? So, um, man, I don't know, man. You know, it's like I tried to question the law, man, you know, but he just had so much promise, you know. He had so much promise in his life, you know, and just to see, you know, that take place when and how, you know, it transpired or whatever, you know, it's, it's kind of like a never be uh, understood by me, you know. But my pops passed away, uh, what, June would be two years, Ju- Ju- June 2020. And, man, that man... He was on his earth 79 years, man, and and at that time, I was, uh, what, 54 or whatever. At that particular time, man, um, I had to just thank a lot, man, that he gave me seven years out here with him. And my mom told me, she was like, well, you know, seven is sign of completion or whatever. So he gave him time out here to sh- to see me, you know, because, you know, at times him and my mom would ask, you know, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, this, that, and third, whatever. So they can hear you say what your dreams and aspirations is, but at the end of the day, they got to sit back and watch. And I think he was content in seeing that, hey, he really have made a difference in his life, man. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you can say whatever till you're blowing the face, but your parents, man, you know, if they still alive, they they're going to believe something different until you show them different. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. of your past history. Yeah. So, um, now I, I got to ask George some questions. Okay. But first off, before I ask George some questions, was you shocked when uh, George told you he wanted to be a teacher? No. Why not? No, because we always have talked about education all of his life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know, I know one of his passions was to teach because he was always trying to help other kids or people that he could that was lacking in certain areas of education. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because that's the question I got for him. <laughs> now, I ain't trying to get you in trouble. I'm just asking this question because we talk about this all the time. What's up? Um, how can I ask this? I got to be politically correct I, when I, I ask can, you this because you got a good feel. job. I can plead the fifth. Yeah, you can plead the fifth. <laughs> okay. if, I, if I don't work this correctly, you can plead the fifth. Yep. So, um... How can I say this? You know, I went to school in Columbia County. Yeah. And, you know, they'd be like, oh, you a Columbia County nigga, blah, blah, blah. All right. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I always respond with, all right, now, you know y'all got them Richmond County educations. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now that you're a teacher, how do you feel you can um, better the school system in Richmond County? That's the best way I can ask it. My principal just asked me the other day, the dude, <coughs> she wanted me to uh, teach AVID courses. That's like advanced placement mm-hmm. to prepare kids for college. Mm-hmm. So that right there will make it like a rigorous um, workload for them. But it's only for a select amount of kids. Like it got to be like a certain group and we keep them within they sales like it's like they stay within yeah i know a certain about. group yeah i was in a gifted program when i was young. yeah it, yeah it's similar to that and I, i'm going to do training for that this summer down in florida but it's it that ain't nothing that's gonna happen overnight because it's once you can um once we get like their attention the discipline and all that down pat then we can move on to the education Right now, it's like, <sighs> I just say it, it's it, it's it's tough right now trying to get them to understand how important an education is. Some of them, though, they are, 
they catching on. Like, they understanding, like, look, this ain't, because I, I tell them, I be real with them, like, this ain't no joke out here. Some of them are content with, like, working a Walmart job, mm-hmm. making, like, $10 an hour. I said, man, you can't, I'm being honest with you, you can't survive off of that. And I and I put it on the board for them. I tell them, I tell them, because they can have their phones in the classroom. I tell them, take your phone at any apartment, pull it up, you know what I'm saying, just see how much the uh, rent is. <coughs> rent around here, you know, average, it's averaging around about 1200 somewhere around there. I said, so you working $10 an hour, 40 hours a week, that's $400. You do that times... What four? Four, yeah. That's sixteen hundred. Mm-hmm. I said, how you gonna? Uh, I said, okay, so that's before taxes, and but we just had ten dollars an hour now. I'm just showing them ten. I said, that's before taxes. I said, after taxes hit your check, you know, you probably gonna be at about eleven hundred for the whole month. And they were like, you know, I could stay at home with my mom. I said, you want to? <laughs> I said you want to stay home with your mama, man. I said you're gonna be grown like these, these the the um the men, the boys that's talking, yeah. saying this stuff. I'm like, man, you know, you want to have your own, man. I said, well, nah, them girls like you not because you in high school. You know what I'm saying? Everybody on the same level. You know what I'm saying? You just got that it factor going for you. But once these girls start getting exposed to like other guys that's in college or you know what I'm saying, other dudes that's out of school that got way more money than you got. I said, you, you, you ain't better to compete with that. So I said, now, one thing that somebody can't take from you is what's up in here, your your, your um intelligence. Someone, they start understanding. They like, man, so what do I need to do? I said, man, be honest with you. Go get you a trade. Go yeah. right there. Go down the street to Augusta Tech. I said, as soon as you finish school, just go get you a trade. You know what I'm saying? And that some of them are getting it. But the other ones, the ones that I know, because I teach Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, so I got kids that's in my Algebra 2 class, and they just get stuff. You know what I'm saying? Are they juniors? Yeah, juniors and in the uh, 10th grade. They changed it now. Like, they do Algebra algebra 2 directly after Algebra 1. It used to be, you take Algebra 1, then Geometry, geometry, then Algebra 2, yeah. So a lot of them, most of them are in the 10th grade. They are catching it like this. I'd be like, man, what's up? You want to get on the mountain team? They be like, no. Nah. I'd be like, man, come on, man. I like, I like, they don't, don't want to be a nerd. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I'm telling them, like, man, I used to, do, I used to do all this stuff when I was in school. You know, I was in, I was on Delta. I was in the French Club, mm-hmm. uh, the Mountain. Like, I was doing all this different stuff, you know. And I, I want them to look at me and be like, well, I don't think Mr. Jones Lane. You know what I'm saying? So maybe. I can I could do this. I can I can be comfortable with doing this stuff and not having people. Look. How do they view you though? Do they view you as like closer to their age, or do they view you as like old and don't you are old oh, for real? Yeah. <laughs> Cause see, I don't, I don't picture that. Like if I was Man. see, I ain't have no teachers like you when I was in, yeah. in school. I would view you as like somebody like man. Why he talking to me like this? He he ain't number like Two, ten years ten older years older than me, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and, but. So, like I said, like some of them, they they take to what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? They come, what's up, Mr. John? They come speak to me and everything. But you got the other ones too that just, I ain't fooling with him. I don't like him, you know? And it, I be all right with it, you know what I'm saying? Because I be feeling like, I, I'm never, I always tell them, I'm like, man, you can be mad. You can have your personal feelings or whatever. I say, I'm not going to stop being a professional to you, though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to stop being your teacher. I mm-hmm. said, you ain't got to talk to me. We don't have to talk about anything else. But I said, in the country of education, you know what I'm saying, I'm still going to be on your head. Like, I don't, because I ain't going to play with you about that because I want you to have that. So they might not get it this school year. They might, you know what I'm saying, might take them going through something over the summer and then coming back the next year and be like, you never led me astray, you know? Like, you always told me right from wrong, and now I understand. Because sometimes, you know, they kids still, and they still trying to find themselves. And someone, you know, doing what they, doing what teenage boys do, so they feeling themselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got no super bad kids, though? Like, the ones that be like, I'm going to be the biggest drug dealer in the Southeast. Man. One of my homeboys said that when we was in elementary school. Man, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. It's crazy. Listen. <laughs> 
I done had kids roll up on me like, what's up? Like, like trying to fight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Like, I ain't talking about it, like one time. Like, this not happening. Three separate times. Three separate schools. What you doing in a situation like that, though? I always uh, de-escalated, you know. One of the boys, I laughed at him. I said, man, you got it. He's like, oh, I know I got it. I said, yeah. I said, I, ain't, I don't want no problem. The <laughs> other one, the other one, he was causing direct disruption in the uh, other classroom. I heard it across the hall. That's how loud it was. I walked over there, you know what I'm saying, just to see what was going on. I was telling him, like, man, just come with me. He thinking he in trouble. He like, man, I ain't going with you. I said, man, just, just come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he ain't in no trouble or nothing. He said, no, no, you know. I always, I know this. If it's an audience, they finna show up. They finna, I mean, show out. You know what I'm saying? They finna get it cutting up. Yeah. Yeah. So he was just like, I ain't going with you. He got the cussing and everything. I said, man, look, man, I ain't ain't cursing at you. I ain't disrespect you or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help, if anything. I'm trying to hurry up and, you know what I'm saying, get you, try to mentor you before a police officer or the principal come up here. Because if the principal come up here, you up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But they, Mm -hmm. then they mind each other like, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. So I walked over there, man, and I shouldn't have did this. I really shouldn't have did this. <coughs> I said, I said, so you ain't gonna come? He was like, no. Let me show you what he did. He's sitting at the desk, right? He had his phone in his hand. I got quick. I like my hands real quick. I said, so you ain't gonna come? He said, no. I snatched his phone out of his hand. I said, you gonna come now? Man, that boy jumped up, flipped the table. I mean, he flipped the whole desk and ran up on me. I gave him the phone. I said, man, you got it, man. You got it. I said, I don't want no smoke. He said, I know you don't. And snapped the phone and went out the, in, the, uh, in the hallway. I said, man. I was like, man, I ain't going to lie. That, that situation right there, it, I, I, like, I had to sit down and like kind of regroup. I'm just like, I felt like I was in the wrong for taking his phone. But at the same time, like, What's going on in our community that these kids just, you know what I'm saying, buck up at an adult? That's a good question. Yeah, like, and I and I tell them all the time, like, when I'm just having, like, casual conversation with them, I be like, man, y'all kids, you know, like, I, my strength a little different from y'all, you know? And I, sometimes I do it when we playing sports, like, when we playing basketball and stuff, I be showing them, like, look, I'm a lot stronger than y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? We might be the same size, but I say I'm a lot stronger than y'all. And I show them that in the weight room, too. You would be surprised. These kids, some of them are big and can't lift a weight off of the, the bar. And I was just like, you be sitting there doing all that talking, man. And you can't <laughs> even lift that. I'm like, come on, man. Like, I think I think it's the rap music, though. I think all yes. the kids nowadays think they hit us because of the rap music. Man, I, I yeah. tell, I had a conversations with my homeboys all the time, and they just like, man, it's entertainment, you know, like that ain't. I said, no, nah, man. I said, whatever you feed in your brain, that's what you're going to become. And I'd be mad. I'd be mad at a lot of rappers. Like, I really be mad at them because I feel like they lying. Like, oh. All right. So, like, I definitely agree with you. So, nowadays, it's NBA Youngboy, right? Yeah. All of them think they're NBA Youngboy. But when we was young, it was Lil Webby. Yeah. We all thought we was Lil Webby. I and your brother say, Lil Lil Pussy. Yeah. (laughs) I was a T.I. guy. Yeah, Yeah. I know. But I... When somebody speaking their truth, I can't I can't be mad at that. But if you on here lying, you know what I'm saying? These kids picking that up and they really believe it because you they idols, you know what I'm saying? So they thinking that's that's what you're supposed to do. If I imitate what you're doing, it'll lead me to some type of success of what you're doing. But that ain't really that ain't that's not a good message to be sending to the kids, you know? Like you're so, not telling them the the what happens, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I seen what happens with my uh, father and my brother, you know what I'm saying? Like. That that uh, that 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 world just ain't it ain't just ain't it. Speaking of what he was talking about about the kids, you know, running up to the and not no having no respect. Uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that there will come a time where the parents become slaves to the children, and he said it three times. And what he meant by that, he gave an illustration. He said um, the kids would go out Thursday night stay out all night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, come back Monday, and the parents were like, where you been? What you mean where I been? I've been out. This is the illustration he gave. <clears throat> so the parents would become trying to be the kid's friend, the child friend, or the parent 
will be afraid of the child or the parent will allow the child to rule the house. You see what I'm saying? And he said that's one of the signs of the Minatirato Asai, which is Arabic for the signs of the hour. You know, and the signs are near. <clears throat> that don't mean that, see, a day in, a day in God's eyes, to I reckon, could be like a thousand years. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So with that being the case, those type of situations are one of the signs that we actually see here today. A lot of people didn't get a chance to see a lot of the signs that take place because they passed on. But we are here physically able to see some of the signs that he spoke of over 1,440 some years ago. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> we have to really pay attention. And that's one of the signs. And many other signs that, 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 that have came. Some have came. Some have happened. Some have ceased from happening. Some have happened and will continue to happen to the day of judgment. So I look at it from uh, a more clearer sense of what they are doing around the world, you know, with those type of situations because parents have become slaves to their children. Now, do you have to accept that? No, you don't have to accept that. You don't have to become that as a parent. But a lot of parents, they are trying to be close friends with their children. My mama always said, I'm not in a popularity contest. (laughs) And I adopted that moniker. I'm not in a popularity contest. You know, I respect my kids, but I have a five-year-old. And my thing is, I'm not trying to be popular among you or any other five-year-old when it comes to your discipline, your understanding of what life is, rather than let you go out and fail. You understand what I'm saying? And this is what's happening in the world today, man. You know, this is one of the many things that's happening in the world today. But, you know, man, and I I say this, man, I tell people, man, we got to pray for our nation. We have to, you know, because I, I would use the term lost loosely, but people are actually lost in the world. And I'm not talking about a particular person or a group of people, but I'm just saying people in general because, I mean, you see it every day, man, things that take place. And, 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 and the crazy part about it, when people catch murder cases, I'm using murder as the worst case scenario. People catch mm-hmm. murder cases and they go to the penitentiary. See, it's shame on you when you don't know the law, right? The laws are designed to keep you in there forever. You understand what I'm saying? So you catch a murder case, unlike old cases of old, you catch a murder case now and the law says you have to do 30 years before you even eligible for parole. So you catch a kid going in 16, 17, 18 years old and he got to do 30 years before they even talk to him. He's 48 years old. He don't even know what it is to be a man. You see what I'm saying? Because he have grown up in the penitentiary. Mm-hmm. And it's not friendly in the penitentiary. Everybody don't have your best interest at heart to try to pull you, hey, young blood, let me highlight you, man. This is how you move this way, whatever, whatever. You know, they take advantage of that. You know, that happens a lot in the pen, man. So, you know, you have to really be, you have to really be careful um, in making your moves, man, because, you know, it can be, it can be to your demise. You understand what I'm saying? You know, um, I think I think a lot of people that, especially when it comes to violence, man, you commit a heinous crime or whatever, not knowing the seriousness of it. And even in the school system with, with these different fights and carrying the weapons and things of that nature to school, man, you're not even knowing what direction that's putting you in. Because guess what? What used to be in the prison system is not there no more. So it used to be a time where you can get your education, you can get a college degree, that stuff going out the window. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of times they have it set where you have to get your GED before you can even eligible for parole. But I'm going to tell you, man, going inside that system, you can get lost in the system. Hmm. 
Yeah, man. I tell guys all the time, man, just because you walk in here on your own power don't mean you're going to walk out. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, you got... It's just, it's just, it's a bad situation, man. But, you know, how do you change it? You know... That's what I was going to ask next. How do you motivate the youth? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, and I always refer to Prophet Muhammad, man, peace be upon him, man. You know, he was a lot chosen uh, messenger, man, the seal of the prophet. He said that you change it in three ways. He said the first way you change it, right, you try to change it with your hands. No, you try to change it with your tongue. And if you can't change it that way, you change it with your hands. And if you can't change it that way, then you hate it in your heart. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, <clears throat> I don't know. And then, in reference to, I wanted to speak on this, man, in reference to what you were saying about the Columbia County School System versus Richmond County School System. You know, that's... I was that's, just joking, though. I know, I I know what you're saying. <laughs> but that's something that come about at some point ago because... I tell people, like, have they ever seen the movie Lean On Me, you know? Mm-hmm. And people that that know about Laney High School from back in the days, right? But if you wanted to get an education, in the midst of everything that's going on, you can get an education. It's all up to the individual. Yeah, You have to apply yourself. I don't care if it's a zoo. It's a jungle. You still have the opportunity to get your education if you want it. You understand what I'm saying? So... You know, people use that as an excuse, man. You know, well, this school was routed. This was there, man. All everything can go on. Yeah, went on when I went to school. But guess what? You still had a valedictory. You still have salutatory. Yeah. You still had honor students. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? You know, so so it's up to the individual, man. You know, hell, I was I was through taking a full load. Probably my 10th grade years. I, I was the rest of my school year. I was getting out of school at 11 o'clock. So why yeah. y'all think Richmond County schools rank so uh, so low? Probably with the testing. In the nation. The probably, testing? Probably the testing. You know what I'm saying? I'm assuming that. I'm not. I'm not. Now, I will say Columbia County Schools does uh, offer, you know, different things or whatever, but that don't mean you don't have a student that repeat a grade. That don't mean you have a student that fail. That don't mean you have a student that don't drop out. Yeah, that's correct. You understand what I'm saying? So this stigma, and it's, and it's good it's good that you raised that because I just had to tell a young female that don't get it twisted because you live in this nice home. You live in Columbia County, and you know you quote unquote bougie or whatever. <laughs> don't forget where you come from. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, this person on this side of you, this person on this side of you, still look at you a certain way. Yeah, that's you correct. You understand what I'm saying? So don't never lose sight of that. You know what I'm saying? So I try to, I try to, you know, stay grounded, man. You know, stay grounded and never forget where you come from. I don't care how your life shape out to be. Don't ever forget where you come from, man. Yeah, because you one day away from being back there. Yeah, you know, so you got to remember that. that, man. Yeah, definitely, man. So <laughs> that's crazy, man. But um, I think we need more uh, black teachers, more black police officers, mm-hmm. and that would kind of help motivate the youth a little bit more. You think like, so? Yeah. yeah. Like um, at your school, how many uh, black male teachers is it? Me, Mister Goes. Mr. DeSeal. Oh, y'all got a lot there. Uh, Coach Way, Coach Cunningham, Mr. Blackwell, Mr. Coswell. He just was on Good Morning America. <laughs> no, nah, seriously, like about a month ago. What was he talking about on there? Um, He do uh media. media. Oh, okay, stuff. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I hope I ain't missing nobody. That's seven. Seven teachers. But that's actually a lot. Yeah. I, I was thinking you was going to say like three. Four nah, at best. See, we at Glen Hills. Yeah. Now, the other schools, now, nah, I, don't, I don't know. But at Glen Hills, you know, it's it's a predominantly black school. So, mm-hmm. I think, like, 
you probably gonna want people in the school that the kids are more familiar with. Cause <clears throat> I ain't gonna lie, like these kids, they they different. <laughs> like they if they if they can't almost like see themselves in you, oh they finna run over you. Mm. Wow. Like they ain't. You have to be firm with them from jump. And even then, they still going to try you. They still going to try you. Just see what they can get away with. Like, they'll keep just just doing stuff. And and then finally, before you know it, they cussing at you. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the classroom, right, you teaching, talking on the phone. I don't seen it all, man. Like, it got to be... If you want to be in that uh that field, man, you got to really want to be there. That's what I told somebody recently. I was at a cigar shop, and this guy asked me to uh, come to his school yeah. and be a, a technology teacher. And I told him, <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't do that because I feel like that's a job where you have to be passionate about yeah. and you have to love your love your job. If you just there for the check, like those girls that's, that's AKAs and, and Deltas, because, <laughs> you know, and they sororities, yeah. That's their number one job. As soon as you get out of college, they're like, girl, yeah. come to my school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what messed it up because you just there for a check, so you don't care. Nah, they come in there, you teaching, and you going home. I ain't going to lie, nah. Some of, some of them are, they want to be there, some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I ain't, I ain't yeah. saying them. I ain't saying them. Uh, I don't, I don't, well, I am saying I don't want no I ain't smoke all with them. them. <laughs> I don't want no smoke with them. I love <laughs> y'all. My sister, Delta. <laughs> <laughs> Are right, you build yourself out? Yeah. I'm saying it though. The majority of them though, because I know them personally. They yeah. go in there, get their check, go get that margarita after work, talk about it, and they be yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> but nah, man, this was a dope interview, man, for real. Uh, anything else y'all want to say before we get off? Anything I ain't hit on? Um, and this is a little different from more than the masters. I was going to tell you too, like, man, he the, uh, he the nice, cool, politically correct one, but... Yeah. I did my thing today. <laughs> well, you know, man, one of the things I want to say, man, you know, you know, shout out to the people that's in the city, man, that's trying to make a difference, man. But I really want to say to um, the people that that's, you know, doing things that <clears throat> that make and put them in a, a, a bad situation, man, you know, just kind of rethink rethink some things, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, man, I'm going to tell you, man, um, I have little young kids, man, tell me, man, I, I can do I can do the time. I can do this. I can do that, man. You know. Everybody ain't built for the penitentiary, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact, bro. You know. So, um, you know, I just want to, you know, kind of like give that insight, man, you know. It ain't what you think it is. It ain't peaches and cream, you know. But I will say this, man, you know, you make your bed hard, man, you have to lie in it, you know. Yeah. But definitely, um, I want all the the youth out there, man, that's that's trying to make a difference in their life, man, and you know, stay focused. And I and I always share with people to use the three L's. Faith, focus, and follow through. Yeah. So you can be anything you want to be, man. If your mind can't conceive it, you can achieve it. And that's what I always want to, you know, the, the the younger generation to understand. You know, you don't always have to <clears throat> try to fit in or deal with um, peer pressure and things of that nature, man. You know, you know, you have a creative mind, man. You have to use it. You know what I mean? You have to use your mind, man. Use your brain for what it really is worth, you know. But, um, hey, man, you know, I enjoy it, you know, coming. You know, we finally got a chance to sit down. We've been trying to do this for a minute, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but, um, hey, man, them streets is watching, man. <laughs> Jay-Z said it a long time, man. The streets, the streets is, watching. is watching. Yeah, you know, he said What you going to do about the documentary? Man. Uh, well, you know, I know you started the podcast now, man. I still, you know, planning to make that move, man. It's just now getting the time to actually get it off the ground, you know, like it should be or whatever. But definitely, man, I hope that, you know, everything that was shared today mm -hmm. can help someone in some way, shape, fashion, or form, you know. 
Yeah, yeah definitely, man. Because, you know, you have to take the advantage of the resources you have and pool your resources, man. You know, if people want to, you know, reach out to me, man, for advice, you know, concerning different things or whatever, you know, hey, man, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. George, you're going to want to uh, document you too when you see quads. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm one. Of them. I'm, I'm I'm a private person, man. I don't, I'm yeah, you and Quiet real different. Me and Brandy was talking about that the other day because yeah. she said, "Uh, Quiet, Quiet about to start a podcast," and she was like, "Yeah, he probably gonna get George to do it." And I said, "That's not a good idea." <laughs> and she was like, "Why?" I said, "I said, well, first off, he a teacher." So it's like certain things so, yeah. they shouldn't talk about yeah. on no podcast because the kids gonna watch it. Yeah. And I right. said, second off, they argue way too much. That's yeah. good content though. It's it's good content for some people, but yeah. the direction that that I would want to hear y'all talk about <laughs> because I would be the main consumer, you know, the type person I am. Yeah. I don't want y'all to argue twenty four seven. Like, and I don't want I don't want I don't want. Quiet to be referencing um, Ghost every two seconds, and then you like, bro, I'm tired of you talking about Ghost. Yeah, and I got a, I got a theory about him and that Ghost thing too, because my brother's the same way. I think he like power and Ghost because it remind him of his dad. Because my brother's the same way. You think so? I I I actually know so. Because <laughs> I asked my dad before. I said I said, hey, you seen Power? He said, yeah, man, I hate that show, man. It remind me of my life. And I said, everybody think they ghost. <laughs> See, I like Kanan because Kanan, the guy that all my cousins was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I see him, I'm like, that's a real person right there. That's yeah. who I'm used to. I look at ghosts like, like that person really don't exist because you can't really be one for in the in, one for out. Yeah, and yeah. then... You know what I'm saying? Doing all this because it, it's gonna catch up with you some kind of way or another. Which happened in the uh, show, even though Quad don't think he did. But <laughs> I like me personally, I don't, that person he he can't exist mm-hmm. in the real world. If that makes sense. You watch Power? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I watch all of them, man. Power, Kanan. Yeah, when Quad when Quad hear that take I just had, he gonna. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get the call. Quad, <laughs> Quad, he bullheaded, man. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times we don't we don't argue. We it's like it's debates, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I meant debate. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't mean because you know when you use the word argument, everybody think about uh, Jody and Yvette. That's yeah. not what I mean. I oh, mean about the fight or something like yeah, that. You know? yeah, yeah, it's just it's just like a that. exchange in the thoughts. Sometimes it get heated, but it ain't never. To yeah. the point of where I'm like, I told hey, let's, you, let's go out the door. I told you, me and, me and Maine was worried about Quad for a minute because them takes was getting bad. <laughs> I don't know where he get that one from. He don't get that one from you, do he? I What's told, them bad takes. <laughs> oh, no. See, sometimes, see, you should see the stuff he's saying in our group chat, man. I be telling him, I'm like, man, you, you need to start thinking before you just blurt out stuff. Oh, sometimes. yeah, you told me about one yeah. situation. I asked him about it uh, before y'all did that shoot. And he just looked at me. <laughs> and he just started looking in his phone and I said, It ain't true. And he was like, I mean, it happened, but not like not like he trying to emphasize Man, it. <laughs> I ain't finna laugh. Like, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't gonna exaggerate it or nothing. And we still them photos, we still ain't seen them yet. He don't he got the pictures in there that he won't release them. Oh too. yeah, he don't never <laughs> release no pictures. Cause I take a lot of his pictures too. Yeah. He don't never release no pictures. Quiet, quiet, don't play about that. Like I just showed Brandy these pictures uh, of you and him from the uh, from the uh, what's them y'all had out there in Evans. The um, I when y'all smoking them about. cigars outside, yeah. And yeah. she looked at him and she was like, "He got these." I said, "Yeah." She said, "Boy, send them to me so I can get them framed." He was like, "I don't. He ain't showed nobody them pictures." I man. said, "Man, I got what me. With them? I got some of you that? too. Um, you in the uh, you in the too." I can't even remember what it was called. The uh, cause they had so many of them. It was with the wedding thing though. When we mm-hmm. we all were dressed mm-hmm. up out there, yeah. yeah, the engagement party. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, you talking yeah. about at um at that? But I don't watch the road. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh huh. Oh, he took, released them. No, man. Nah, I took some real good pictures <laughs> too. Yeah. All y'all. You need to send them to That's me. Crazy, man. <laughs> I yeah, got man. you. I'll send, send them. Pictures, man. I, I ain't got seen you. Them. She said she about to frame them though. Yeah. Yeah, I was dug it fresh that day, man. You yeah. would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you speaking, speaking, speaking what you were saying about ghosts, man, you know, <clears throat> they used to call me black or uh, uh, 
little Nino or whatever, man. But the thing is, I correct people, man, when it comes to that Nino, man. One thing I did not do or will not do is what he did. You know what I'm saying? Tell on some nah, folks. I don't do that, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and that's another thing what you spoke about. The morals, the codes, the rules. Principles. People just didn't get it, man. You know, they didn't get it. It seemed like in this day and time. So that's, that's why I started with that with that question about how Augusta was back then and now. That's definitely different, man. You know what I mean? So so definitely, man, you know, you learn that young, man, early on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the thing is, man, you know, a lot of stuff, man, you carry to the grave with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, hey, the a new drug, nah, it's just going cloud. viral. <laughs> cloud, cloud and viral, yep. Yep, already mm-hmm. moved. And the thing is, man, you know, social media and stuff like that, man, you know, it serves its purpose or whatever, man, but people, people, um, you know, they they put on for that, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, a lot of times, you know, you can actually say this person did this, that, and third, and when you sit back in that cell and ask yourself the real question, you told on yourself. Mm-hmm. You feel I'm coming from? You know, you would have never seen me take money that's tall and put it on my shoulder. You would have never seen that, man. You know <laughs> nah, nah, that's a whole nother conversation, man. too. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm old school. Yeah, they do a lot of weird stuff, yeah, nah. Yeah, yeah. But I be, I be telling a lot of folks, a lot of folks my age that um, a lot of the stuff these kids doing, if this was if if we was kids then they would have been doing it too. If that makes sense. What you mean? Say that again. Like okay, like he was just talking about the money phone thing and everything. Yeah. Like our age group, we don't, we don't not most of us don't do that. Some of them do, of yeah. course, but yeah. most of them don't. But like if we was sixteen now, yeah. some of them would be the ones doing it. But they like nah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing that. Like, or like another example because that was a bad example. How the kids be like uh, smoking on this op pack? Nah, I don't, I don't know, man. I cause we, I think so. We were raised different though, you know. Yeah, like I would never. Yeah, I well, that's me though. I I can't see myself disrespecting the the dead, you know. I yeah. Can't. But I always compare it to like when we was young. Everybody wanted to uh, group up and take their shirts off and and, t- and take the B two K pictures with all their shirts off. That's what I call it. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I always thought was weird. Yeah. But I, <laughs> like you know, it was it was kids our age though that really had they had money. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But they weren't flashing it because you know it's robbers out here. You know? Yeah, they they weren't doing that. But now it's like you probably right. It's the clout era. Though. Yeah, like they gonna post it, but they ain't really too concerned about robbers because. Yeah, obvious reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got one last yeah. question before we get off too. Uh, that's that's based off that, and I was thinking about that on the way here, but I ain't gonna say that on on the podcast. What I was thinking about, but like, do you have people your age that act like them kids, like do stuff like that, or like still want to sit around and drink and smoke and don't want to do nothing productive? Uh, especially people like you grew up with or some uh, uh, before you went in. Uh, you mean now, today? Uh huh. Nah, nah, man. You know he be around productive people. Yeah, most of the people <laughs> okay. that, I, that yeah. I deal with, man, they 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 own some um, productivity, positivity, you know, aspiration. You know, in fact, Sunday, man, I got to speak to a group of people um, at the cosmetology school. Me and my business partner Slim, but um, you know, man. Um, A lot of tells in the car oh, man, ignorance pay honorable avoidance. That's a strong factor. Mm-hmm. Ignorance pay honorable avoidance. So if it was someone from back in my day or, you know, that I know from back then that's now, I wouldn't be dealing with them. Nah, man. You know better. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was just asking that because yeah, I just came from somewhere where I seen some... Um, Older cats? Yeah, and they were one acting. Flashing, flashing paper and all that. Yeah, all yeah. Some on though, you know what I'm saying. They bought it. Yeah. They, they like they'll flash the money. You know what I'm saying. They ready to go buy whatever limbs. You know what I'm saying. Necessary if you yeah, try to take it. Yeah, but it's still kind of weird. 
Yeah. Like, imagine if your dad did that right now. Like, uh, he just put uh, out some money. It was like, we having some paper, <laughs> though. <laughs> I tell him a trip. <laughs> it's a, that's like a, I don't, I don't want to say it's like an arrogant thing, but I don't know. It just it ain't nothing that I do, though. Yeah, yeah, it's about being do. humble. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta remain humble, man. You know, humility gonna carry you a long ways, man. Yeah. It shows in your character, man. You know, it's not wrong with enjoying life, having fun, and doing things, man. But you know, you gotta always know, um, in doing so, it's repercussion behind everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> ah, man, I. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't know where that came from. You know what I'm saying? I just had I just I'm, had to ask that question I'm at be, the end, I'm though. Beyond I was curious. <laughs> it's beyond my comprehension, man. I don't know where it came from. After after what I seen, a because I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. You know, when a, when a cat was in the trenches, you know, on whatever stage or whatever level he was, you know, um, whichever way he was trying to elevate, he was trying to elevate in secrecy, man. Mm-hmm. He's trying to elevate in privacy. You know, he might not trying to elevate, you know, that going to cost him a life, you know. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Game meant to be sold, not told, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's just a Jew, old Jew. You know what I'm saying? Game meant to be sold, not told. Ain't that an old, uh, da, uh, excuse me, Don Juan quote? <laughs> I don't know, you know, that, but uh, Don, Don Juan had a slick, slick yeah. tongue. That was Master P. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of his uh, albums, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah, man, you know, um, in fact, Two Changes came out with a junk called... Uh, no, it was Snoop Dogg, On dope. No Limit. It was one yeah, of yeah, those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Dope Don't Sell yeah, Itself. Yeah, yeah. That came out recently. Junk, man. Somebody, somebody pulled up on me and said, man, I wouldn't expect you to be listening to that. And I said, why? You know, I mean, when you get older, man, you know, if you like a certain um, phase or genre of music, that's not going to change because you get older. If you like music, you're going to still, I still listen to old school music, but I still listen to, I follow as it go. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? What I like, I like. What I don't, he turned me on to Kevin Gates, man. I've been listening to Kevin Gates yeah. ever since. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Tr- Quad turned me on to Boost. I've been listening to Boost ever since. You know, because I like... Quiet in that booth, man. You know what I'm saying? But I don't get stuck where that's the only thing that I can listen to. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You know, yeah. I have, you know, I, I've always known that it's a wide awake feel for a wide awake man. You know what I'm saying? So you have to expand your your horizon, man, and your breast of understanding. If that makes sense what I'm saying. Yeah, you have I'll to expand follow. your breast of understanding, man. So, you know, you can't... You can't allow yourself to come victim to be subjected to being inside a box. You know what I'm saying? Or a shell. Man, you have to grow, man. Like I like I stated earlier about me asking one of my kids for advice or coming to them about whatever, you know, a situation. Because I'm the type of person, and I've always been this way, man, and that's how I've grown. I've never been the type of individual that I was too old or... Uh, too knowledgeable to learn more. I've always been open to learn, even to this very day. You know, I'm always reading. I'm always trying to acquire information. I'm always trying to grow as an individual. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So people get certain stages and points in their life. They can't learn nothing else. They don't want to learn nothing else. I want to learn until the day I leave this earth. You know, probably Muhammad said, you seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, from the womb to the tomb. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm seeking knowledge from the cradle to the grave, that means I'm going to learn until I leave this earth. You know? And that's how I try to pass on to people, man. You never stop learning, man. I don't give a damn what you know. You never stop learning, man. I'm with you on that. Yeah, you never. I mean, be a student of life, man. You know? A student of life. You know? So, and that's always the case among us as a people. You know, we, we, we get, and I'm talking about as a whole, we get and we forget about what's going to take us to the next plateau because we got it. We got it made. You know what I'm saying? No, you ain't never got it made. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I definitely so, agree. Yeah, man. You know, and, and one of my things that I, I, I remember coming up, it was a saying that do for self or die a slave, stop kissing behind in the master's cave. And I live by that, bro. You know what I mean? 
you know, somebody asked me about a job the other day, you know, and I, and I was saying that, um, <clears throat> hey, man, ain't a whole lot I can tell you, you know. But I mean, I know job got codes of ethics and things of that nature, but I took these trades, man, because I knew I wanted to have something to fall back on because I didn't want to go in jobs and they telling me, no, you got a felony, close the door in my face, close it for I didn't want to deal with that, you know what I mean? So I applied myself to come out and, you know, move in that direction. And, you know, a lot blessed me, man, you know. So that's that's definitely how I look at it, man, you know. And when I see, man, I look at my kids and I look at their kids, my grandkids, and sometimes I be overwhelmed, man. I have to just really grab myself because mm-hmm. it, it could reduce you to tears, man, because I'm so proud of them, yeah. you know, and, 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 and their achievements in life, man. And it just could have been so much easier to go the other way. You know what I'm saying? How easy was it for, uh, especially the boys, I'm gone, and they just, you know, and, and people, you know, little kip, little kip, whatever, you know, I'm going to be like my daddy. You know, you know what I'm saying? And that's then true. that's a whole nother battle. Your son doing time with you. You feel I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. Or worse. So, you know, those things, man, that, 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 that I'm really humble and grateful, man, and I admire, you know, the fact that Allah was merciful enough to me and my family to save them from the things that I probably have done. You feel where I'm coming from? So, you know, it's just a lot, man, that that that, that we have to recognize. You know what I'm saying? As a people, man, a lot of people just, you know, because their life is good, they just think that it's it's okay. No, you got to still, man, give thanks, you know, and be grateful, man, you know. And I, and I just love the fact that, that, that I am a humble individual now, man. I am a humble individual. I never been there at one point. You know, it didn't matter about the sun coming up, man. Because I mean, I didn't. I never played, man. You know, and I mean, it was, <coughs> it was, it, it was just known. I don't play. You know what I'm saying? And I never have. But the thing is, man. You know, it's so much more to life than just looking at things from a bird's eye view. You know, it's a bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And I learned that, you know, and I'm and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, man, you know, it, it's crazy, man, that that how we met or whatever, you know, and then we, you know, we talked about some things and, and stuff like that. And now here we're doing the podcast, so you know, life is about evolving. So I hope everything that we share here today it can help someone, man. You know, if it just helped one person, then the job was done. That's what I say all the time. It's a hundred people in the room. As long as one person heard yeah, it, it's yeah, mission yeah. accomplished. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I need y'all to just keep inspiring the youth, man. We need more people to start doing that too. Inspiring people in general, not even just the youth. Yeah, right, right. and I'm always here for any advice, anybody. You know, like Likewise. I'm here. But yeah, that's all we got for today, man. Appreciate y'all for listening. We out. All right.